Hello guys, my name is Adam Shadow and today I will show you how to properly fight on the ground as infantry in GTA Online or GTA 5 Online or however you want to call it. So, first of all, get yourself an outfit that has this sort of helmet with these four lenses, it's also actually called quad lens helmet. This allows you to toggle between thermals at any time. You have to go to Accessories, press spacebar or whatever you have it set to. And as you can see, now I have thermals at any time I want. I can actually disable it by activating the same outfit. Now, let me show you the loadout I'm using. This is basically the default selection you should always have, or maybe even like this if you want to. This is the most important weapon, this is the Marksman Rifle, as it's called, is basically a really slowly firing automatic rifle that kills people in 4 shots, just like this. Oh, actually, this was 3, maybe because of a bit of lag, but it shouldn't be 4. This game sadly has quite a bit of uh, issues with uh, lag compensation and you sometimes kill people in less shots. Then, the second sniper rifle, you should have the heavy sniper rifle, this is mainly useful. If you use the Sekiro Surf CO abilities, Drop Bull Shark, as it's called, and now you can fire at a jet and kill it very quickly, like you can make it smoke after like two or three rounds, and then it inevitably will die, but you can continue shooting until it literally explodes. You can also use the Sekiro Surf CO to use by authorities to remove cops from going after you. Ghost organization is obvious, and drop armor is also very useful. You basically drop armor like VST, you can pick it up, and now I'm extremely hard to kill. Let me refresh it, and Shark, my friend, he, here with me, he will now shoot me with the marksman rifle, very slowly, into the chest, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's basically double as many, or even more theoretically because of armor, and he probably got at least one or two double hits on me when doing this, which is a huge advantage over people who don't have this stuff. Also, if I equip it, I can basically two-shot him with this thing, the marksman rifle, and one shot obviously with the heavy sniper. I'm using default ammo on both of them. You can use explosive rounds on the heavy sniper to take down jets literally in two shots. But I prefer to have just more ammo and not have to refill it like crazy. Then, the second most important weapons are the heavy weapons, as the game calls them. This is the... Shark, please come closer to me. This is the homing launcher. This is basically, you unlock this at level 1 or something like that. It's basically immediately unlocked. And the missiles from it are significantly faster. The, the RPG ones. As you can see, the starting speed is roughly the same. But as you can see, the homing missile f flies way further. You can hear, you'll be able to hear it just in a second. Yeah, now you heard the explosion in the distance. And I'll kill myself with the other cops. Or rather, the military in this case. The way you want to use these, at least with the homing launch, as you can see, the crosshair is not great, and especially when I turn, starting to lock onto something, I have a like, hard time to say where exactly I'm aiming. You can obviously use the larger crosshair, but I prefer to use a screen dot for this, like I showed in my Battlefield video. Basically, you can just download something like Play Claw or. Oh, V-shade or something like that to put a dot in the center of your screen. 
Then there is the grenade launcher. This is pretty rarely useful, but can be used to hit targets behind something. Like, let's say, shark, stay here, and I will try to hit you f above this building. Let's see how this works out. It's a little tricky because it fires on R. It's kind of out of trouble. Oh yeah, I'm firing behind him. Ah, sadly, he was a little too close for that. But you can get the idea. This is very useful, it requires a shitload of skill to learn. And then there is the also important minigun. Shark, please stay where you are right now. And I will demonstrate how you can use the minigun properly. Most people either stay in first person, which you should always use, because as you can see in first person I'm moving extremely fast side to side compared to when I'm in third person you can see how much slower I'm hitting the exact buttons even when I hit shift it's still not the same acceleration but with the minigun you actually want to go third person zoom out as much as you can and then you can fire like this around corners you can't see me at this point I can uh, shoot him Obviously, it's very important to kill yourself with the uh, explosives as fast as you can. After you kill someone, usually, unless you are in a super campy position above them, their spawns. Then we have the pistols. I just use the upper atomizer. It's this weird alien pistol. It's only really good to push vehicles like this. It doesn't really damage them much. And the AP pistol just to shoot out of vehicles, since it's the highest DPS weapon you can use from inside a vehicle. You can see I'm using it. Actually it removes the suppressor when you are inside, which is kind of cute. For those of you who don't know, suppressors don't affect damage. This is a common misconception. The game tells you they reduce damage, but they actually don't. This has been known for quite a few years now. So yeah, don't worry about putting suppressors. Same on the heavy sniper, I'll talk about the, the exact attachments a bit later. And then I have only grenades, I have the sticky bombs. These things, well, they are basically grenades that you can decide when to blow them up. And you can throw them out of cars and they do huge damage to things. Like They can one-shot a Torador, which is like one of the most dangerous cars in the game since it usually takes six homing missiles to kill. And you have quite a few of them to blow yourself up with. You actually can blow yourself up instantly with them, like you literally can press fire button or whatever thing you have it, I have it on left mouse button, and then detonate instantly. You obviously don't want to use the can, like Shark is down here. So yeah, those are basically all the weapons you are going to use. Now let's go over the attachments. All of the other weapons are dramatically worse than these. For example, the combat MG is terrible. Like it has maybe like 20 times less DPS than the minigun, or 10 times at least, which is just like why. And also the marksman rifle has huge damage over range, while it's similar DPS and close. It's actually a bit less, but it's still quite a lot. So for the heavy sniper, you want to use either extended clip, incendiary rounds are good, because then you can one-shot people in the chest, and it works even when they are above you, since it basically hits them, almost kills them, and then burns them to death. It doesn't kill them if they have BST and armor though. And you have, even if you have BSD. Full mental jacker downs are terrible, they are basically worse explosive rounds against vehicles. Armor piercing can be useful because they allow you to one-shot people when they have... I think that when they have BSD and armor you can actually one-shot them, but if they don't have armor you can't, which is like some reverse 
Rockstar logic for some reason. And yeah, also explosive rounds ragdoll people. They are very devastating. Obviously, never want to use the default clip or even the Mark 1 sniper because it just literally has less ammo. It's worse in every way, or equal or worse, rather. You want to use not the zoom scope, this is this has pretty okay zoom, same as the night vision and thermal scope, but the advanced scope has the most zoom, and you can also use thermal from your helmet, so like you rarely need the thermal scope. Especially if you can learn to very quickly type the um, inside the menu to select the accessory. But yeah, night vision practically useless. You can almost always see people or just use thermal in that case. Muzzles. Oh, bell end is the best. Not because there would be any difference in terms of recoil between these two, but this one has basically a smaller size, so it doesn't cover your screen as much. And it's actually better than to, to use the suppressor, because the suppressor... Oh, well, no attachment is obviously the worst, usually. So, so it's basically either suppressor or muzzle brake. Suppressor is usually not a problem if you fire the gun normally since the recoil resets. However, if you are spamming it, like you are rapidly switching between it and for example your hands or your sticky bomb, which I will demonstrate shortly, the recoil will not reset, so muzzle brake in that case is better. And it's also covering less screen, so. Barrels, I don't think the heavy barrel does much, but I think it looks cooler, so I equip it. I don't think that's really any difference, but maybe. I usually use no tints or liveries or anything. Now, for marksman rifle, you are using, again, extended clip. In this case, it's actually mostly obvious, since these other rounds are not really good, since you have way too less of them. Like, you have too few of them, rather, to be effective. So yeah, just like standard clip. Flashlight is practically useless, it just covers your screen. Scopes, you don't want to use any of these two, because they actually wobble when you are uh, moving side to side, or just moving in general. They literally move up and down, up and down, which is ridiculous. Yeah, so you just want to use the zoom scope. As you saw, me using it has like no disadvantage. It's in, well, except maybe super short range, but in that case, just use the minigun. Grimps, obviously use Grimp because it reduces recoil, there is no real disadvantage. Barrels, again, I don't think it does much on this gun, but still it looks cooler and you don't have this post here at the front to cover your skin. And... Yeah, muzzles. This is actually really important one, because so many people spread misinformation about this. You can use any of these muzzle brakes to reduce your code. The suppressor doesn't reduce, but it doesn't really make you much more silent, and there's like the minimap. As you can see, it shows damage is reduced, but it's not the case. Also, range is not reduced. No attachment. Well, it exists, but it doesn't matter. Probably the best one is the flat muzzle brake. Since, as you can see, it's actually the smallest one out of all of them. Like, there are a few of these that are similar, like this heavy duty muzzle brake. A lot of people will tell you to use the fat end one because it does some weird thing with hitbox, and that's not true. It doesn't also reduce more recoil. That's just a huge lie that some people are spreading. So they, those are basically all the guns you want to care about. On the AP pistol I have suppressor and extending mags, I think. That's everything you need. Oh yeah, I also have the flashlight on it because I wanted to have at least one gun with a flashlight. Just in case I get into a weird game mode where it's really dark. Now, let me show you how to fight. So. You can see 
shark here to move side to side you actually don't want to oh, do make sure this you don't want to rapidly uh, press ADAD because they're not actually moving out of the way so the, he can still hit me oh. shark please uh, aim at me in first person with a sniper rifle and really quickly spam AD AD AD. Yeah, as you can see, he's barely moving, so I could literally just keep shooting at him and hit him. Okay, that's enough, I think. To properly do it, you actually want to use longer time, like maybe half a second or so. Or maybe even a full second. Now do it like that. A bit longer, I think. Yeah, as you can see, he's now much harder to hit. And now, in order to not be too predictable because this is kind of predictable if you do it you can sometimes shorten the interval or you can do something like this where you do a short back and forth and then go continue into the direction you are going which messes up people that try to predict your movement you can also make this these movements shorter or longer just not too short or not too long because then like shark just holds to the one side and just move Yes, yeah, so you can see I have no problem shooting him. Also, these weapons are the automatic weapons. Right up here. I'm not pressing the button over and over. I'm literally just holding and it's firing. Same, I think, with the rockets. Yeah, you can basically auto fire every weapon. To get more rockets, you basically have to be really fast and select them here. There's also a delay. You can see when I buy it, there's this lock symbol for some time. That doesn't allow you to buy the one ammo too quickly for some random reason. It's already so slow to buy ammo anyway. For those of you who don't know how to uh, make this custom loadout, you can actually uh, use a gun locker. I will show you where to get those. Here in the either in the maze bank for closures, how it's called. Quite a few of them have this. For example, nightclub has maybe has it, or maybe not. Okay. I think um, the clubhouse has it. How is it called? Yeah, this thing. Yeah, this has gun locker, which is basically like a safe that you go in to. Also, uh, bunkers have them. And uh, a CEO office also have them. For that, we need to go to. Dynasty 8 executive. I use that to be honest the most of the time. Oh, yeah, this is also gun locker. It also has safe. For those of you who don't know who, where the gun locker is, on on one of these pictures, here, you can see where my cursor is. You want to stand here in front of this sort of piece of wall I was showing there and uh, press the interaction button. It should show up for you. I had quite a few issues finding that. But you can Google this anyway. Now, for I mentioned spamming weapons. So how does that work? You basically fire, switch to. Oh, I usually do it to the sticky bomb. I think it even works with the hands. And then you switch back, and you can fire immediately. Okay, that was imperfect. Same with rocket launcher. This is actually the most useful one. And as you can see, if you do it too fast, you actually do this for some reason. For some reason, if you are doing that too fast, the game actually messes up and points your 
crosshair downwards like that. I didn't move my mouse at all while doing that. Which is which can be used if you for example want to make a script to uh, fire full auto like this. You can use this in order to like fire one rocket and instantly after that kill yourself. Which is pretty overpowered in certain scenarios. Yeah, and that's probably all I got for you for today. You basically just if you are close enough, you either minigun or rather if you are very close you rocket launcher. If you are a bit further away, so rocket launching is just a little harder. Like this for example, it's a bit more tricky to hit the exact spot under his feet. You minigun him, especially around corners. And the when he they are even further away you use maximum rifle and when they are in a jet or super far away you just you know, use the heavy sniper if the zoom of this thing is not enough because as you can see for example looking at those bushes you can zoom a lot more with this which sometimes comes in handy you can also try the app on atomizer since it's basically free ammo Yeah, thank you guys for watching, please like and subscribe, I hope you learned something new and interesting, so make sure you do not miss my future videos about GTA, Minecraft or any other game. Have a great time.